One, two, three, four. <laughs> I found this old tool chest at an antique store in eastern Tennessee. It was needing a little bit of love, okay? It was needing a lot of love. But I could see that there was some beauty inside. Um, well, maybe not inside, uh, as that was kind of ugly too and sort of smelled like the back end of a mule. Here we see the three sliding tills that the tool chest had with it, as well as a few saw hangers on the lid. And it also had some metal bars on the lid on the underside. Here we see the lock mortise is pretty destroyed there. Uh, and the corner of this upper skirt was destroyed. And there's an interesting little button in there, right there. And we're going to talk about that again in a little while. Now these are finger recesses that allow you to slide the tills forward when they're all the way back. And this is an external lid support, which is kind of odd in itself. A story that was told to me is that an old man in Simmerly Creek, Tennessee, which is East Tennessee, owned the chest and had it all of his life. Now, after studying Chris Schwartz's book, The Anarchist Tool Chest, I pretty much knew where I wanted to go with it and felt like this would be an ideal situation for me in my limited space because you can really pack a lot of tools into a small space in a tool chest like this. And if you read through Chris Schwartz's book, The Anarchist Tool Chest, he tells you all about that in pretty great detail. Now this is with the first coat of federal blue milk paint on the chest. And you can see the damaged corners are painted over and uh, all the hardware is off of it. This is the inside after I stripped all the paint off the inside that took quite some time. And you can see the trays have been stripped out as well, uh, or as much as possible. Also the lid you can see here is beautiful, beautiful pine, uh, probably at least about 100 years old. Here you get a closer look at the busted lock mortise with the lock removed. And here I've put a plate in there to fill that space. And then I also had to fill the holes and re-drill them. There's the hardware after it's been repainted, the handles and finished. Okay, here we are all finished up. Second coat of milk paint. The hardware has been remounted. You can see the handles been repainted and the brass has been polished. Here on the side is that little button we saw earlier and it's a, actually a release for the lid, kind of a hidden release. The lid is pretty deep so I mounted some auger bits in there and some saws and that saw tail actually tilts outward so that you can gain access to the saws in the back without banging your fingers on tools that would be mounted above it. And these little buttons here turn down to keep the saws from shifting and falling out of the saw tail when the lid is closed. Here's some of the tills extended, the main tills there. And you can see down in the bottom with some planes in it. Just getting started putting stuff in there. And then I added some saw hangers and chisel rack to the front lid, or front edge. And there's some stuff there in the back. And there we are, all finished. Mm -hmm.